down smoke. Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. My name is Nalo, and today we're going to be doing a 1,000 subscriber Q&A. So uh, just real quick, I wanted to thank you all for the support and getting me to 1,000 subscribers. Obviously, that's a huge milestone, and I'm really grateful for all of you out there that have supported me along the way and got me this far. If you wanted to ask a question, I did it on Twitter and Discord, so if you're not on my Twitter or Discord accounts, then make sure you go follow those. There's links in the description below. And uh, with that being said, let's get started with the Q&A. Okay, so the first question comes from Chesticide in the Discord, and he says, Have prices of skins dropped overall in general? And that's, uh, that's true, but only for a specific reason. It's true because the market is just, uh, is just specifically down right now. The reason for that is because of the operation, obviously, and the CS20 case. The CS20 case sort of dropped some of the items a little bit because people were trying to sell their items fast so they could buy the CS20 case and try to open for uh, new skins. And uh, obviously, people trying to buy the new skins from the CS20 case as well, just straight off the market. And then, of course, you had uh, people doing that again for the Operation Shattered Web. This time it was a little bit different because the Shattered Web was a lot more content and a lot more skins. So there's a lot more people also selling their skins, and that's what caused the market to kind of go down for those older skins. And uh, it's not going to be a permanent effect once this operation is over, and once we're back to kind of a content drought that we were in before the CS20 case, then all the market is going to rise back up to the original spot that it was at. And of course, we have Christmas as well, which is going to reinvigorate the market quite a bit. I will be talking about that in a uh, in the next video that I make, so make sure you catch that one because it'll be a bunch of tips for Christmas and investing and stuff like that. The next question comes from Blocks12 in Discord, and he asks, "How much time do you invest in each video?" So I invest uh, kind of a dependent amount of time into each video. It kind of depends on what the video is. So obviously, like the videos where I talk about some sort of news update, I'm trying to get those ones out as fast as possible. So I cut corners a little bit on some specific things just so I can get the news out to you guys faster than anybody else can. Uh, that way you guys can be informed uh, a lot faster right when stuff comes out. If you don't have like a Twitter account, for example, then you'll get the news from my YouTube channel, which is really cool. And uh, so those ones I kind of, you know, cut corners a little bit on some aspects so that I can get the video out quicker to you guys. Uh, but I do still try to make it, you know, at least entertaining enough to watch all the way through. And then uh, for other videos, like specifically the trading guide, uh, or sorry, the trading adventure video that I just recently made, that one I invested a lot of time into because I wanted to put a lot of entertainment value into it. And I, wanna make, I wanted to make it, you know, very informative and uh, also very engaging to the audience. So uh, that one obviously is a lot more time put into it. Uh, generally speaking, for those ones that I put a lot more time into, those ones can take anywhere up to like six hours to make. And then the ones that I, you know, cut corners on a little bit, those ones will probably take under an hour to make. Uh, so with that being said, that's pretty much the answer to that question. The next question comes from Peepo, and he asks, How much money have I spent on CSGO? So obviously I have to spend a certain amount of money just to start off with investing and stuff like that. Uh, for the most part, I have this kind of interesting and weird strategy, a lot of people find it weird at least, where I kind of go through and liquidate my skins and turn it into money. Um, so with that process, it's kind of hard to accurately determine how much money I put into CSGO. Uh, but I do like to put in money to it uh, every now and then. If you see my inventory, it's usually not very reflective of like my overall like net worth in CSGO. Uh, I have a lot more stuff on like storage accounts and like in liquid on different sites like CS deals and stuff like that. Uh, just in case I want to snipe something. So you know, I have I have a lot of different like interesting strategies and interesting storage options that I do. And uh, it's a little bit different than most other people, but that's just kind of how I do it. So it's kind of hard to determine accurately how much I've actually put into the game, but I would say it's probably close to around $100 or $200 at this point, and that's over the course of like four to five years. The next question from the Discord also comes from Guardian, and he asks, what's the best crafts to make in this new skin Cyclone? So with this current uh, meta, I guess, we have of like new stickers and stuff like that, uh, we have a few really cool crafts that I did want to point out. We do have like the AK-47 uh, Broke Purple with the uh, with the Assassin sticker from the Halo capsule. This one obviously kind of looks like a Supreme collab or something like that. That's kind of what people are trying to make it into. And I think that's kind of cool. And uh, that, 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 that AK does look pretty nice. Uh, so that one's kind of interesting to make as a craft. I think I'm going to do that as well with my Broke Purple. And uh, I think another cool one with the Halo capsule, of course, is like just Halo related skins. So for example, I picked up a few uh, 0.117 uh, uh, float items in minimal wear because, you know, in Halo, that's uh, Master Chief's number is 0.117. And so I can kind of make a, a few cool crafts with that as well. And uh, that's kind of an interesting thing you can do as well. Just kind of try to find uh, floats or something like that that's related and then try to make a skin out of that as well. 
Um, but in general, crafts are kind of up to what you like, and it's not really up to what other people like. There's obviously some that I can highlight, but for the most part, it's, it's just going to be like what you want to look at when you're playing the game. If you think a sticker looks really cool and people think it looks really dumb, uh, don't worry about what they think. If you think it looks really cool, then that's what you're going to stare at in-game, and that's what you're going to have to deal with, and, uh, you know, that's what you can kind of just use on your gun. So really, it should be up to your own personal preference, and you shouldn't have to worry about, like, hype or price or anything like that. Next up, we have a question from Gascoy, and he asks, what's the best way to profit? So there's actually a lot of different methods to profit, and there's not really a best way to profit. It's kind of up to what you're best at personally. So for example, if you're really good at negotiating, and you're really good at trading, and you, you're good at figuring out like different price margins and stuff like that, uh, then you're probably going to be making the most profit by trading. And then if you're the best at like predicting the market outcomes and stuff like that, then you're probably going to be best at investing to make money. And then if you're best at like sniping stuff off the market, like certain skins or whatever, then you're probably going to be, you know, best making profit at that. Um, and then obviously trade up contracts, those are a way to profit as well, but it's like, you know, RNG. So I wouldn't really rely on that as a method to profit, but you know, you you can technically profit off of those. Um, I guess if you, you can find like good profitable skins and good profitable margins, uh, then you can do trade up contracts to profit as well. But again, it's kind of up to what you're best at. And if you are, you know, lacking in one area or another, obviously you can watch videos and uh, do that kind of thing to try and get a little bit better at that different method. Um, but yeah, there's not really a best way to profit overall, just kind of up to personal preference. The next question comes from someone body person and he asks, uh, what is the best investment that I've made so far? So I have not actually been able to, you know, accurately calculate what the best investment I personally made is, but I can say that the best investment I've at least looked at or talked about uh, was the Kato 15 stickers. I also think those ones are going to go up more in the future as well. So I think those are still a good investment to make, even though they're at a high price right now. Um, but yeah, those ones in general are the best kind of investment that I've talked about uh, in recent times at least. In terms of like all time, I would say the best investment I've ever made was Kato 14 sticker to skins. So the reason these ones are very good is because you can flip them for a lot more than you buy them for. You can snipe them off the market and then flip them for a good amount of uh, profit. And obviously this is a very good method, but it's also a very kind of hard method because you have to find people that will buy it and that's sort of a difficult thing to do because most of them are so expensive and people don't want, really want to invest in them in the, in the first place. And so for the most part, you can't really like get the item and you can't really trade it just instantly. You'll have to wait and you'll have to find a good buyer, but a flipping Cattle 14 stickered skins is also a very good method of making profit and also they're very good investments as well. The next question comes from Archie and he asks, who is Joe? Joe Mama. Yeah, okay, uh, you got owned, and uh, don't ask any more questions again unless you want to get owned again. Next up we have Kamikaze, and he's asking, how did I get into CSGO? So I got into CSGO back in high school around freshman year uh, with some of my friends. I was about 14 years old, and those friends had gotten into the game just because it had like kind of just come out. And uh, they were into it, they were buying skins and, you know, talking about it and playing competitive and stuff like that. And I wanted to kind of, like, one-up them. So I started playing the game and uh, I was like, yeah, I got a Karambit Fade, I got all this, like, cool stuff. Uh, all these skins that were really popular back in the day. And uh, they obviously didn't believe me. But it was kind of fun to just mess with them. And so that's why I originally got into CSGO, just because all my friends played it. And uh, I never actually ended up playing with them that much. But I still have them added on my friends list to this day. And uh, a lot of them haven't even been on in like 500 days, so that kind of sucks. But they still have a lot of cool stuff in their inventories, so, I mean, I don't know. They could come back and get some free money off that, I guess. But uh, anyway, yeah, that's kind of why I first got into CSGO, and I still play it today. Next question comes from eNinja1, and he asks, When did I first get into CSGO uh, trading, and when I specifically get into trading aspect of CSGO? Uh, so I've actually always been into trading and, and into marketplaces on every game that I've played. I played Roblox way back in the day, and uh, I was really into trading on that as well. I had like 16,000 forum posts on the uh, on the trading uh, sub-forum on Roblox, and I was just super into trading, and uh, I had like a huge inventory. And then, of course, I moved into TF2 after that, and I also did a lot of trading on TF2. If you look back at, like, my market or trading history, there's, like, a ton of keys um, being traded around and buds and, like, all this other stuff for TF2. Unusuals, you name it. And then, uh, obviously, when I get into CSGO, just kind of naturally I got into it just because I, that's what I've always kind of done when it comes to games. I usually end up focusing more on the trading and market aspect of games rather than, like, actually competitively playing them. And uh, CSGO has always been a very good one for that. CSGO has probably been the most like uh, most scalar one. It's been like the biggest one uh, that I've actually you know gone into trading because it's been such a huge marketplace and it has such a like uh, in-depth marketplace. There's so much stuff you can buy, so many different methods to trade and make money, and um, that's kind of why I've gotten so much into CSGO trading. 
but it was just kind of natural right when I started playing and I saw that there was a, hu a huge skin marketplace. I kind of just naturally was attracted to it and, uh, and kind of just got into it right off the bat. Next up, we have a bunch of weird questions from Russian name, but uh, he does ask one question that I think is valid, and that's uh, face reveal win. So I'm going to be revealing my face probably around like 100,000 subscribers uh, or maybe a little bit later. It kind of just depends, um, maybe even just around 10k subs. I don't really know. It kind of depends on need. So like if it comes, if, it, if this channel becomes like more of a personal channel and uh, I'm getting like a lot more views on my like personal channel videos, such as like my 1,000 subscriber highlight video, uh, making that video, I knew it wasn't going to get as many views as my other stuff because there was no like necessity for it. It was kind of just made because... You know, I wanted to celebrate a thousand subscribers and the people that are part of my community heavily, uh, they could kind of have something that is interesting to watch and look back on. And uh, I knew it wasn't going to get as many views as my other videos going into it. That's kind of how some of my videos are. Uh, but if it does become sort of more of a huge community and people are really interested in like a brand sort of thing with Nalo, uh, then I will obviously, you know, at some point make it more personal. And I think I can do that by revealing my face at some point. But yeah, right now there's not really a necessity for it, so we'll see in the future. After skipping through some more joke questions, we have one from FTW Ben, and he asks, How much initially did I first invest in CSGO, and what was my first skin? Uh, so initially investing into CSGO, I think I put in maybe like a $20 Steam card, something like that. That's probably the most accurate um, idea of what happened, because I just probably didn't have like a part-time or job at that point. Uh, in general, so probably like a $20 Steam card that I got for like my birthday or Christmas or something along those lines. And uh, the first skin that I bought, I think wasn't actually an, was actually an AK Redline. And I think it's because I just really liked Redline and I thought it was really cool and just yeah, obviously a very old skin. So I think it's the first skin that I actually bought, um, but I'm not 100% sure on that. It could have been something else, um, but I think that was the first thing that I first you know bought and tried to I guess invest in. The first thing that I guess I really was trying to invest in. Um, was probably the Khalil Cerberus. I think that was the first skin that I tried actually investing in way back in the day. Um, I don't even remember why, but for some reason I remember I was specifically trying to invest in that skin. I'm not really sure why, to be honest with you. Okay, we have two questions here from Archie and Beefy that I think are both kind of intertwined in a way, so I'll get them knocked out real quick right out of the way. So how can I get rich in CSGO? That's, again, up to you personally what you are best at. I, I kind of answered this earlier in the video, but make sure you're doing something that you personally enjoy doing and also something that you personally think you're good at. So uh, anything that you can make a lot of profit off of that you just personally like and personally think is good. Uh, so that could be trade-up contracts, you know, trade-up, uh, just trading up in general. Uh, you can just do investments, that whole kind of thing. And then, of course, Beefy asks, what's more profitable, trade-up contracts or trading in general? And that uh, depends on, I guess, just how the market is in terms of stability. So if the market's not very stable, then trading can actually lose you a lot of money. Um, but if, if it is really stable, then you can make a lot of money off of trading uh, a lot vastly more than you could make off of trade-up contracts. Um, obviously, trade-up contracts are on a percentage chance, so it's more profitable, I guess, in the end game if you're doing the right trade-up contracts. Um, but if you're doing like ones that are a little bit more risky, you do have a chance to make a lot more profit a lot quicker. But obviously, that's a risk, and you could lose all of it in one go. Another question from Gascoy, we have, why did you start becoming a YouTuber? I started becoming a YouTuber because I enjoy making content for videos and stuff like that. I enjoy editing, and I enjoy building a community. And obviously, I've tried this before. I think everybody's tried making a YouTube channel at some point in their life. Uh, but I tried it in the past, and it wasn't as successful as this channel, not even close. And so, you know, seeing the success on this channel was very rewarding, and it's made me have a lot of motivation to continue making videos and continue uh, playing CSGO and pushing into the investment and trading world of CSGO. And uh, so, you know, that's kind of why I became a YouTuber, just because I wanted to make videos. I wanted to educate people on trading and on investing. All right, the next question comes from Yarlu, and he asks, are you going to make videos of other games in your channel, or maybe just a second channel in general? I have no plans to do that right now, but I guess if there's enough demand for it, I can look into it. Uh, so I don't think there's a lot of demand for it right now either. I just think I should continue making investment videos and continue making trading videos. Uh, CSGO obviously has a lot of content right now uh, in terms of the Operation Shattered Web. So I think because of that, there is obviously a very um, a, a lot of content that I can make videos about. And so for that reason, I think it's not really super necessary to make other game videos on my channel or make a second channel at this point. All right, now we have two questions, one from what inspired you to start doing YouTube and what inspired you to continue doing YouTube, and then do I expect to continue doing YouTube in the following years from Noxious and Donkey. So for Noxious, for your question, the first thing that inspired me to start doing YouTube is because I just really had a, a desire to make videos for CSGO. I, I'm not sure, that's just kind of how my brain works. And then uh, to continue doing YouTube, obviously, is all of you guys. 
and all the support you've been giving me on my channel. Obviously, I like making videos for you guys, and I like making educational stuff, and so I really like seeing contents, uh, uh, comments where people are saying, you know, thank you so much for this video, thank you for doing this, I was, you know, I really wanted to buy something that you were talking about, and you made a good video about it, so I'm going to go buy it, stuff like that, and I really like seeing uh, that my videos are actually physically helping people, and for that reason, that obviously inspires me to continue making videos. And then as for Donkey, do I expect to continue doing YouTube in the coming years? Yes, for sure. Uh, I do think that my channel is seeing a lot of success. And there's not really any reason to stop right now. So I'm going to continue into the future, and we'll see what that holds. The next question comes from Soldat, and he asks, what are my top five favorite anime? So number five is going to be Daily Lives of High School Boys. It's basically just a really comedic series about these high school boys, as it sounds. And uh, there's a lot of really funny stuff in it. Personally, when I was going into it, I didn't think it was going to be like as comedic and as funny as it was. I thought it was going to be like a lot of like low tier humor, but it was actually super funny, and uh, it was super entertaining to watch it. Next is uh, Magician's Grand Grandchild. So this one, when you first start watching it, it seems like a really generic one. Uh, but once you get like a few episodes in, you start to realize that they like break a lot of boundaries, and it's actually like not as generic as you think. And uh, it does a really good job of doing that, so that's why it's on my top five list. Next is Garen Logon. So this is one that I think everybody should watch. It was my number one favorite one for a very long time, but that changed and I uh, got some new ones that I liked even more. Uh, but this one is extremely good. Gurren Lagann is probably one of the best story-driven anime I've ever seen. And uh, so many crazy things happen. Again, it breaks a lot of boundaries. And, uh, you, you know, a lot of crazy stuff happens. If you've seen it, then you know what I'm talking about. Number two is The Disastrous Life of Psyche K. So this one's about this, like, kid who has psychic powers. It's also a comedy, and uh, it's also super entertaining. Uh, super, super funny anime. And uh, I do recommend it to anybody looking for any comedy anime out there. Um, and it's actually getting a new season as well on Netflix in December. I actually figured that out when I was looking up, like, uh, ones to put on this list. Uh, but yeah, this this one is super funny as well, and uh, also a huge fan of this one. And then finally, number one is Dr. Stone. So this one's new. It's from one of the most recent anime seasons, and uh, I think they really knocked it out of the park with this. Uh, while I was looking through ones to watch and I saw this one, I was like, okay, it's probably not going to be that good. It looks like it has some sort of like Microsoft Paint uh, picture on it. It's probably going to be not so great. Uh, but then I started watching it, and I was like, holy crap, this thing is awesome. This is like one of the best animes I've ever seen in my life. And uh, it, it's, a, it's very, very, very good. Uh, you have to watch it. It's just, it's just undescribable. It's super good. I'm a good man says, is Chroma Collection actually being removed in 2020? I don't know where you're getting this information from. I don't know why you think I'll know this information. Obviously, I don't know what CSGO is going to do with their updates. Um, I don't. I think if you're asking about the case being removed from the game, like being removed from drops, then it's possible. I think the Chroma case has already been removed, actually. So the Chroma 3 case is probably the one that we're looking at next. Um, but yeah, again, really weird question here. Not really sure how to answer it, to be honest. Next, we have a question from Agent Sushi. What is your favorite case and favorite skin collection? So my favorite case, I think, is actually the Shattered Web case. It has just so many good skins. They really just killed it with the skins. Uh, it, they all look super awesome, and they're actually not all that expensive as well. Uh, the AK Rat Rod is a surprisingly cool gem, uh, and the Op Containment Breach is, like, really cool because it's centered around, like, how my channel art looks and how my channel aesthetic looks right now. And so I definitely want to pick up one of those op-containment breaches. I actually think it's a super cool case, and they, they, did, a, they did a very, very, very good job on it. And um, I just think it's a really good case overall. And then as for favorite collection, uh, this one I'd have to say is probably the Cash Collection, the original one, uh, if they, you know, make a new one in the future at all. The original Cash Collection is very cool because of the good little Cerberus. Um, you, of course, have all those, like, other skins that uh, are related to Cash in general. I just think with the Cash collection, they really kept it close to the map itself, and they really, you know, they really made it a coherent collection that, you know, has a lot of references to the original map, and I think that's basically the best thing you can do when you're making a new collection in general. The next question comes from Kowal, and he asks, would I consider ever posting several types of CS videos instead of just skin videos? Uh, so I'm assuming you're talking about, like, professional games or uh, investing in, like, sports betting and different things like that. Um, I don't really have any desire to make stuff like that right now, um, but it definitely is something that's possible in the future. Right now, again, I just want to, you know, stay on investment videos, and uh, I just kind of want to make videos like that. I kind of want to explore different types of videos in terms of trading and investing, and uh, probably just staying on that track at this moment. Next, we kind of have a big question from eNinja1, but basically what he's asking is how skin updates and skin changes and weapon changes affect the CS market and the market as a whole. And uh, I'm kind of just going to answer this as best as I can. So first of all, if a weapon gets buffed, 
then that means that the skins for the item are going to go up in price because more people are going to be using the buffed item. We can see this with the FAMAS and the Galil recently as well. Uh, they haven't really got that much of a price increase just because of the Shattered Web Collection being out as well, and so those skins kind of equalized a little bit and kind of have stated a staple price. Um, but then if you look at, you know, other skins that have been buffed in the past, like the SG, for example, those skin prices went crazy. Tiger Moth was way up at like $9 for a purple, which is insane, especially for a, uh, an SG skin that isn't all that popular in the first place. And then when skin nerfs happen, that obviously drops the price of skins. Um, and that, you know, that will obviously drop the price because less people are going to be using it. And then when it comes to skin updates, such as maybe like normal mapping and things like that, normal mapping can increase the price of skins slightly, but not much. Uh, small skin updates like that aren't going to do very much for the skin itself. Um, but again, you can't really predict these things happening. You can't really predict them updating certain skins or certain weapons. And so for that reason, it's kind of futile to kind of make investment predictions about different items, different specific items like this, because we have no confirmation if people, are, if Valve is actually going to, you know, make these updates or if they're going to hold off. And so it's kind of uh, a bad idea to sort of invest in that idea, in that speculation. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this hugely long video about investments and questions and about me personally and my channel personally. I know this video was probably dragging on for a while, but I wanted to make sure everybody's you know valid questions were answered. If I didn't answer one of your questions, it probably wasn't a valid question. It was probably just a joke question uh, that you know can be answered in two seconds on the Discord as a joke. Um, but I wanted to make this, you know, just a kind of a good video, good collection of questions for my 1,000 subscribers, and uh, obviously that means it has to be pretty long. Now, there were some more questions on Twitter, but they, you know, weren't as many as they were on Discord, and I wanted to just kind of get these generalized questions out of the way. Uh, these are very good questions. They were very good to answer and kind of give more insight into investments and stuff like that. So this video will kind of be good because it will also provide some insight into investing and not just my channel in general. So anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm not going to ask to subscribe because if you made it this far, you probably already are subscribed to me. Um, but with that being said, make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it. And I will see you all next time. Peace.